Hello and welcome to my kitchen once again. Today I wanted to just do a quick video tutorial on how to make your own ghee or clarified butter at home. Of course you can buy it already made for you in the store but it's quite expensive or you can do what I do and take a little bit of time and make it yourself easily in your own kitchen. Ghee is one of my favorite fats to use in the kitchen and it can be used just like butter. It is great at high heats because it doesn't go rancid or break down and you can also use it in your baking and just on your food. If you haven't tried it before, it's delicious and I think you're gonna love it. Okay, step one in the ghee making process is picking your saucepan. It is important that you try and find a shallow wide pot um, deeper pots are just more difficult to scrape off the residue as it builds up. You'll see what I mean as we move along here. So then what you're doing is taking, you start with unsalted butter. Organic is preferable, but I know that's quite expensive. So I don't generally get organic. I do, however, buy unsalted. And you want to chop it up, just like you see here, in uniform little chunks just so that it melts evenly. And I'm today working with about a pound and a half of butter because I'm making a double batch. Um, and that's it. We're gonna turn the burner on to very low heat, like a two. The number one thing you want to remember here is not to let your butter burn. It'll ruin the entire batch. So it does take a little bit of time. It's 9.33 in the morning right now. I wanted to show exactly how much time this is going to take. And we're just gonna let that melt for as long as it takes. It usually takes about 90 minutes to make a batch. Um, yeah, low heat, really important. Don't forget that part. And I will be back with step two. And you can see my butter is really starting to melt now. It's super important that you don't stir it. You're not gonna stir the entire process. So what we're doing now is we're just waiting for everything to melt and once it does, it's gonna to come to a low simmer, which is where we are going to sit for quite a while. And the milk solids are going to start to separate from the fat in the butter. The milk solids are going to come to the top and also start sticking to the bottom, which is what we want. So I'll come back to you when we get to that point and I'll show you how we um, pull them off and get rid of them which creates our beautiful awesome ghee that we can enjoy dairy free. Okay, I'm back and I've actually just turned down my uh, pot, my heat, to like about a one because I felt like it was sounding like it was starting to boil a bit too rapidly. So we have been in the process for 30 minutes and this is what it looks like. So you can see the foam filming on top and I don't know if you could really tell in this video, but I can see it starting to bubble underneath. So at this point, it hasn't been disturbed at all. I'm gonna start just taking the foam off. So super carefully because I don't wanna get the butter or the oil, I only wanna take those solids off the top. So I just use a metal spoon and I skim it off being really careful not to mix that foam back in because like I said before, those are those milk solids that we wanna get rid of. So you're just pulling those off the top and this process is going to get repeated several times in the next hour. And as the foam comes to the surface, you just skim it off and then let it continue to simmer. Okay, so it's only been a couple of minutes, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like once I've skimmed off the foam for the first time. So again, it's still just 10 o'clock, so 30 minutes. And this is how much foam I got on my first skim. Now, depending on your brand of butter that you choose, that will vary. But eventually, you're gonna be able to see right to the bottom of the pan or the pot. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but if you have a glass pot, that actually works better. You can just see a little bit better, but I'll show you as we go along. You'll be able to see right down to the bottom of the pot, and that's how you know it's time to skim, um, or to filter, rather. So, like I said, that was my first time skimming the foam. I'll do it probably two or three more times in the next hour, and then I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so we're not even an hour in, but it looks like I've got a really good batch of butter this time. And to be honest, you never can tell. 
Um, it doesn't seem to matter what brand you get, but some batches cook down really nicely and others take longer. So I feel like this might be my last skim. So as I pull my film off to the side, you I hope you can see, I can see right down to the bottom of the pot. And once we can see that, we're in pretty good shape. So what's happening is I'm pulling the foam off the top and the rest of those milk solids are hanging out on the bottom of the pan. Um, they're gonna be stuck down there. Can you see? Oh yeah, you can see. So see those little brown specks? That's what we're looking for. I'm gonna let it go for probably 15 more minutes. You can't really overdo it. They're not going to burn. I'm still on one. It's super low heat. And you're gonna notice it starts to smell amazing in your house. It gets this caramelly smell as all the milk solids come out and you're left with the most beautiful little creation you ever saw. You're gonna to wanna to put it on everything, like I do. Anyway, that's the status. Oh, this is not gonna take as long as I thought, so that's great. Today I used cow's butter, if anybody cares, but I've used other brands too that have gone this well, so I will be so back. It's been exactly one hour and you can see my liquid is totally clear. I can see right to the bottom of my pot and all those little brown specks is exactly what I want. That's all the milk solids pulled out of the butter. So it's been one hour and my next step is going to be to strain it. So I'm using mason jars. I always use mason jars and I have a little funnel, a little rubber funnel and I'm using cheesecloth. But if you don't have cheesecloth, you can also use a coffee filter. It takes a little bit more time but it works great. I used, I used coffee filters my first uh, two or three times until I found cheesecloth, which you can usually get at the grocery store, but it is a specialty item, so sometimes they're out of it. Anyway, I'm just going to pour my liquid into my mason jars through the cheesecloth, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I finished my filtering through my cheesecloth. Um, I did spill a little on myself and on the floor and I'll tell you right now it's really hot So if you know a kitchen hack about how to dump hot liquids out of a pot uh, I'd love to hear it because I still haven't figured it out. But as you can see I'm left with two mason jars Full of this sort of golden clear liquid that is going to cool when it gets to room temperature it's sort of a it's sort of a solid, it's a soft solid at room temperature, so it will solidify a bit, so it makes it more usable, and you can use it just like butter. You can cook with this, you can put it on any food you like, and actually, butter and ghee doesn't uh, break down at high heat, so it doesn't go rancid when you're cooking with it. It's a great, great cooking oil, and it tastes amazing on everything. This is now dairy-free, so if you have a problem with lactose, ghee is gonna be your new best friend. You can buy this in the store already made, but it is quite expensive, about $30 for one of these small jars. Um, and I just made it myself for only the cost of the butter. If you have any questions, do let me know. And if you liked this video and would like to see more, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment just below. I always love hearing from you.